On the breakfast this morning, the Federal High Court in Abuja dismissed a suit seeking to sack Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State and his deputy. We'll be looking at the implications of all of this this morning. Will Chelsea get hammered by Real Madrid in their second leg? Can they retain their status as the champions of Europe? And like always, we will be reviewing all the top stories making headlines on the front pages of major dailies across the country. Good morning to you, and this is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's the Friday edition, my best um, edition of the week. Don't ask me why. My name is Justin Akadoni. And I am Messi Bofo. It's a beautiful Friday morning. And it's good to know that you're on the other side and you're part of the breakfast. Yes. Mercy, like always, ask every Friday, what are your plans for the weekend? I don't know, really. I mean, you know how it can be with this. Mercy, you know. go to the beach, have some fun, go do your nails or whatever you guys do. And <laughs> I don't mind if you can send me some money. Okay, fine. Don't worry, I'll send you a check. <laughs> just tell me how much you need. No, but seriously, it's the weekend as much one. as possible. Just try and I relax. I definitely hold you to this one. Say that again. I will hold you to this. No, we are very far. So before you hold me out, I'll run away. <laughs> so today is Friday and we are thanking God as much as possible. Just try and relax. Have a restful weekend. Do what makes you happy and just unwind as much as you can. Let us move to top trending MC Oluomo is in the news and he's been made a, a chairman of the PAC, a PAC uh, management committee. You remember the story of what happened with the NURTW after he was sent dismissed as the chairman in Lagos. Right now, from what we hear from the Lagos state government, he's been appointed as PAC management committee chairman. He is going to be in charge of all the parks and garages in Lagos state. Well, I mean, that's contrary to, you know, what a lot of persons had expected prior to the time where you had that suspension coming, you know, shortly after the suspension, and then you have the appointment. Now, popular opinion, uh, a lot of reactions from Nigeria, a lot of people said, oh, it was the sweetest news they've had, you know, in a very long time, his suspension should be forever, because you can't have Agberus, in the words of this person's, uh, you know, be above the law, and this is an opportunity for the governor of Lagos State, Song Wo Lu, uh, to reorganize the union. However, can one man be stronger than a state or a state governor? The Nigerian police should be at alert to arrest anyone of them who may want to disobey the governor's pronouncement. So happy for this. I mean, this is it. So you also have another reaction saying if the Lagos state government can do this, it will restore their credibility and integrity. The Lagos NURTW are a group of thugs uh, that on lavish violence and intimidation on transport workers under the guise of collecting dues and levies, monies that are, are unaccountable. And when the election comes, the militia arm of the Lagos state government will come forward. I mean, these are popular thoughts uh, following that suspension. But I mean, you see how everything turned out. First of all, a lot of people saying that, uh, or oh, really, uh, when the we we actually had that hint from the son who said he was appointed as the general manager. Mm. And of course, some people are saying, okay, there's a different, that was fake news, and this is the real news now. But however, <laughs> there's an appointment as you want to look at it. But if you look at the career of MC Oluomo, it's been characterized by turbulent, uh, you know, there's so much turbulence with him and his leadership at a time. Uh, you want to talk about the fact that his leadership faced a lot of violence and war. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time in 2019, he was shot during yes, one of the time. APC rally yes, and he was in the hospital. Yes. And in some people are saying that campaigns and all. Yes. there's been a lot of accusations. So one would expect that if the, I mean, if you suspend someone, the reason why the union, the transport union had suspended him was for the issue of insubordination, intimidation, and incitement, and what have you. Uh, the best thing to do is to investigate and look at the issue before you're now giving an, an so I mean an appointment. So there's a lot that's going on. It's it gets a, a whole lot, lot of, of tongue wagging as in why must it be MC Oluomo? Uh, does he have like um, a perpetual agreement uh, with the state government? Uh, he was um, some people have termed him the you know the boss of um, the Agbaros in Lagos. You know he's the he was the chairman of the NURTW. Uh, before long he was suspended, and right now he's been made to supervise all the parks 
in Lagos. Why must it be him? A lot of people are, are questioning that. Are there no other you know, suitable person who could actually manage all of the affairs of um, the parks in Lagos State? Is it that he's, uh, uh, he's uh, uh, what would I call it, uh, his antecedent, um, his um, background? In, that's, <laughs> that's the question. Is it that he's the only one that can deliver on the job. Now, let's not also forget the fact that a lot of persons have also accused him of organizing thugs, disrupting mm -hmm. political um, process in Lagos. Uh, 2023 is here, so there's a lot of conspiracy theory, a lot of speculation has been put out. But you want to look at the bond that you know the Lagos State government and has with, the bond. and yeah, it's a bond <laughs> with MC Oluwamo. So many persons are praying to have that kind of bond in their relationship. Uh, you know, these days, because if you look at the bond between the Lagos State Government and MC Oluwama, it's very strong, it's very healthy, and one will be asking, what could be responsible for this kind of relationship? One of our colleagues said that uh, she wants her relationship to be as strong as, um, you know, the relationship between the Lagos State Government and MC Oluwama. So, I'm we're saying one and the same... <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the same thing that we're saying, but uh, see, this is, it's Friday, so we're just leaving it, you know, a little bit very light, but uh, it's, it's, uh, this is on a light and not. The question is, if you have this, I think we need to move away from the fact that we can constantly behave like this and expect a different result. No way. I mean, that's it. Legotians are asking questions, and people are asking, what is really about MC Oluwamo mother? we mm. constantly you know, have to have him at the scene. I mean, look at that. So it's a lot, but we move away because we have all the top trending stories. All right, we'll move away from that one. Remember the the son of um, uh, the, the GO, the GO, General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. That's um, uh, the son of um, Enoch Adeboye. He is in the news again. That's Lake to be precise. Uh, he trended them a couple of days back for calling uh, a minister in, in the church, uh, or some ministers, um, goat. But in another deleted <laughs> Instagram post, he had slammed a pastor for preaching after his father's close-out sermon. On Sunday, well, let me just quote what he said. Uh, why would you preach another sermon after Daddy Gio has just finished preaching? You're not a son, you are a goat, sir. Next Thanksgiving service, just do altar call, then Thanksgiving. Remember, that stuff uh, generated, mercy, you're smiling, generated a whole lot of... Uh, yeah. There's written a lot of uh, criticism on social media with many disapproving of his choice of words. of words. So if you read the Bible... No, when well. I heard that God, what came to my mind was greatest <laughs> of all times. Mercy no, how can you be thinking of greatest <laughs> of all times? The Bible... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah. But if you read the King James Version of the Bible, you know, apart from the King James Version of the Bible, you know the Bible, some part of the Bible, there's a lot of parable in it. And so... Uh, the goats, the sheep, usually this this kind of, what is it called again? There's a figure of speech. It's uh, the um, anecdote, um, allegory, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if that's what it is, but I know it's a figure of speech. Mm. But you know how it is right now, and I feel like a lot of people are really angry. So I, I can't, I'm not holding brief for him because he has apologized. And that's because I don't know in the context that he used the word goat. <laughs> so um, when you talk about goats, me, I'm thinking about goats and how goats behave. What comes to your mind when you think of goat mercy? <laughs> goats are very silly. <laughs> no, but, but you know, I, um, so it's, it's quite sensitive. And uh, it, it might just be the fact that he probably would have been speaking in parable. Mm. Or, but really, do you have to say that? That's the question. I mean, no, you didn't have to say that. Do Some you really have to come sensitive. out to say that on social media? But I understand the pressure a lot of people are under when you have social media. I mean, you won't talk about stuff. There's a lot going on in your mind, and there's a space where you can just put it out. So it's very swift, and you have all of the resources that it takes. You just put it up there. So I think that that's on it. I'm not trying to hold brief. But I'm just looking at, you know, all of the circumstances surrounding that. Some people would say probably it was a parable that he was making. I don't understand what the laws are. I mean, what exactly went wrong? Do they have an order of service? Did the pastor breach the order of service? And if he did, uh, you know, in a Christian 
uh, association or gathering like that, what would have happened? What would you expect mm. that he would call the pastor in question? I'm sure that he has access to this pastor and just call him and say, hey, I don't think that this is fine. I don't think that this is fair. But, you know, Rather than bringing it out and saying a goat. Maybe he was speaking in parables. I'm just trying to say, because in the Bible, in the, in the Bible you know, there's a lot of parable that talks about sheep. Even, even in the Bible. There are yeah, sheep, the but there's no goats. The goats yeah, you know, the, the no, there's no really goats. For goats uh, yeah, so so there's goats in the Bible, the <laughs> sheep, yeah. Yes. Uh, but you know, goats are goats. goats yeah, but the sh you know, goats. no, the sheep they always follow the shepherd. They yes. listen. So goats are disobedient. Go so I'm yes. just thinking that it was just you know a figure of speech that was used, trying to sound like the Bible, and you know the King James version of the Bible. You know how it came. The kid has mercy, King James now. No, him. but it's a good thing that he's apologized. One, I mean, we live in uh, a time where. There's a lot that's going on. We need to just be very careful and be very sensitive with our words and our actions. Yes, you know, you're right, Ed, where another man uh, begins. All right, let's talk about something that is also trending in the United States of America. Let me just read a bit of an intro there. The United States Supreme Court uh, uh, is to include a black female justice for the first time in the 233-year history after the Senate confirmed Justice Kitanji Brown Jackson to the nine-member badge. She is a black woman and she is the first black female justice in the United States of America. And something very interesting about this particular uh, development is that it was actually a bipartisan uh, 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 thing because uh, three members of um, the, uh, what's the, uh, uh, we have the Democrats and, and the Republicans now. I was thinking of ABC, the PDP. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even, don't even. <laughs> Two members of the Republicans actually joined her with the Democrats uh, to give uh, her the number of um, 53 in which she used them. Um, imagine, invariably, we have um, the Republicans actually supporting the Democrats on this particular development. Mm. Well, so it's actually a beautiful moment uh, for, uh, you know, the black. The Would it be okay race. to say the black race, black community? It sounds like we're already sounding very racist, but it's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, so women are women. Uh, winning at this point in time is a win for women across the world. My producer says it's a good one for young girls, too. You know, younger, you know what uh, Lupita Nyong'o said uh, when she won... Um, uh, that's uh, the Academy Awards then that she said, the Oscars that is, she said uh, to young girls that, that whatever you, you think you can uh, dream of, that your dreams are actually valid. Now this uh, actually is telling a whole lot to uh, black people, to uh, young women who aspire to greater heights in the United States. We, if you trace all the history of the United States uh, where the, the, the black people were not really given so much opportunity, who would have guessed that right now they will be celebrating or celebrating the first uh, black female justice. So whatever it is right now, no matter what your, uh, your race, your country, be you black, be you Hispanic, be you Latino, be you uh, Indo-American, whatever so, so, you are, so, your so, dreams but apart are from valid. That, you know, apart from that, the fact that you know, it's a win for women, uh, it's also the fact that she's very qualified. Yes, if you very, look at very. qualification. I mean, some people have said that she's more qualified than the previous two that mm. you've had. And so this is actually a plus. So it goes beyond saying, hey, you're a woman, but you also need to walk yourself to that part where we're talking about I think we should learn back here at home like in Nigeria. We should actually look in this direction where women, you know, uh, you know, if they have the opportunity, if they have the credentials, if they have the pedigree, whatever it takes to get uh, a job done, we should not discriminate. We should not say because, uh, you know, it's a man's word here in this part of the world that um, will not give such appointments to women. So I think we have a long way. It's a, it's a long way for us to go as a country. We still have to grapple with the issue of, you know, cultural beliefs. Mm. I mean, you have a lot of cultural, cultural religion, uh, and all of cultural that. sentiment, and then you also have you know, some religious sentiment. This is a big problem. Until we get, you know, we begin to break even. Recently, I've started seeing mm. that there are laws, you have laws, you have court orders, but it doesn't really change anything. One would think that we need to change the belief system. If the belief system changes, then everything changes. Because you act, I mean, the way you are acting, 
is as a result of your belief system. And so what you believe, you begin to act and you, over know, time. you begin to yes. behave. Yes, that's a good one. Uh, the, the lesson is that, first of all, she's a woman. Secondly, even though she didn't really dream, uh, it, it's just in a, a climate and a society where uh, women are also seen as part of the system. And, and on the other hand, she's very qualified. So that's a lot of it. Yeah, so congratulations to Justice Kitanji Brown Jackson on her confirmation as a justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, we wish you well, you know, in all that you do for the justice system and the judiciary in the United States of America. That's all we're taking on top trending for this Friday, the last for this week. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back and review the front pages of major dailies across the nation in a moment to join us again. <laughs>